I'm going to be making a series of videos on this super robot. It's a bit of a basket case, and I thought it'd be pretty interesting to um, kind of document as I go. Basically, it just needs everything a super needs from reliability to more horsepower. The body's pretty fucking average. It's so dusty at the moment. Probably had the car three years. Ran for about two weeks when I bought it. And then it buggered up. There she is. When I went and had a look at this car, I was like, I saw that and I bought it. Uh, I got two weeks of skids, fair bit of limiter in there, you know, good times. I initially blamed the problem on this car as the wiring, which I've redone, sort of, halfway there. Need to loom off a lot of shit and clean it up. It looks a hundred times worse than this when I bought it. It's actually um, pretty neat at the moment compared to what there was, believe it or not. It's pretty shocking. Here is very average. Oh, shit. Needs a lot of lot of interior work. I reckon this console bit here is just missing pieces, shifters, crap. That boot's crap. It's all scratched, and I don't know if you can see the surface properly, but that's pretty crappy. Floor mats are buggered. Some nice riser pedals though. There's lots of little imperfections that I want to fix up, like door seals, pretty crappy. Right now the car's covered in dust, so you can't really tell. Um, there's like a bit of clear coat fade on the other side there, and dodgiest cracker in here. Yeah, it's not what you want. It's got non-turbo brakes, but the two-piece aftermarket rotors with Bendix pads. It's a fucking mad um, coil pack setup. It's pretty cool. She was done on that 440 horsepower with a TO4Z turbo, um, 67 millimeter. It was very laggy for some reason. I don't really know why. Wasn't getting full boost till 5,000 RPM. It's got a set of 272 cams in it. Mad um, cold air intake. Don't really see them on Supras. Euro spec glass headlights apparently. Um, lots of cool shit. Yeah. Um, the goal for this car is to restore it, obviously, and maybe get a bit bit of horsepower, 600, 700 horsepower at the wheels. Should be 100% um, street legal with permits and stuff. Just a bit of a fun street car to blast around in. It's got dodgiest fuel set up for street. When I was driving this around, all you should smell was fuel all the time. It was great. Spoiler, it's got a bit of chicken on it. I don't know where that came from. So at the moment, I've got the fuel tank out, as I reckon the, the problem started with the fuel tank. So a surge tank there. And, um... So yeah, the problem was the, the motor would cut out every now and again, like when you touch the clutch, or... It'd boost up fine, cruise around fine, sometimes it'd just die. Went over everything, nothing wrong with it. None of the sensors, nothing. Well, there was something wrong, I just couldn't figure out what it was. And um, fuel pressure was fine, even when it was given the problem. Yada, yada, yada. Bit of a needle in a haystack problem, yeah? But uh, decided to pull the fuel tank out, because, you know, just basic check. And, uh,. Find some shit in here. 
Alright, so there's the lift pump stock down, so. This is where the fun began. Basically, because car wasn't running right, I decided to go through a whole series of upgrades. And, uh, it's just because of that. And that's... I've honestly never seen a fuel filter that blocked up before. You literally can't even see light through it. It's actually ridiculous. Obviously, um... It was pumping enough fuel to get fuel in the surge tank to keep the fuel pressure up, etc. So I didn't really figure out what was wrong with it until I looked in the tank. It's so dirty in there. I don't know if you can see that. I don't even I don't even know what that thing is. We'll pull that out later and have a look. I just don't really feel like um not right now. So yeah, I got, I got a jerry can of some of the fuel that came out. You can just see the the muck floating around in there, just white floaties and bits of jelly, um, just random dirt and crap. Just So these are my other toys, currently my daily rider. Probably won't make too many videos about this, but yeah, she goes alright. This was my daily driven Supra for about five years. She's gotten a bit tired, needs a bit of work. Probably feature a few videos. So yeah, I quite like the Mark III Supra. It's got awesome, awesome interior. Mark IV has a pretty damn good interior too, I must admit. Both of them are just really good cars overall. And of course, like any good Supra, it's been um modified. Super if I had a single turbo, it's not really much of a super, is it? Pretty much everything on this guy is all custom work. Being a um fucking 1G. There's no off-the-shelf parts. Fuck this hood. Classic Mark for super problems. That's my um, hood stick, the only way the hood actually stays up on the car. Classic hydraulics. So as I was saying, this is the car I make a lot of custom parts for. Like those cam gears, laved up, they've got a bit rusty. Probably um, treat them or machine up new bits out of some aluminium. Um, it's a GT30R turbo. That dump pipe is a work of art, in my opinion. The main issues with this car at the moment is the clutch masters leaking everywhere. I don't know if you can really see it, but I'll be doing a rebuild on them, sleeving them with stainless steel so they last pretty much forever. Um, be converting it to all aftermarket sensors and um, aftermarket ECU, all wired up myself. Um, I'll be doing a rear end rebuild, putting a new diff in, two way diff, reinforcing the rear subframes, suspension bushes, etc. I'll make um, videos and all that stuff. Need to do something about these brakes as well because they're useless. The best part of um, a 1G though is the noise. Yeah. 
daily driven with an exhaust that's just straight and I reckon the 1G GTE sounds better than 2J easily until the 2J is on boost of course yeah this thing's pretty mad tons of limiter got a lot of stories and done a lot of shit in this car so yeah definitely making a few videos about this one so that's it for today's video guys this was mainly just a preview of my cars and a rough idea of where I want to take them I want to build my A70 into a tough daily drifter using an alternate engine I will be making a guide to the 1G GT later including rebuilding the motor to handle more horsepower as well as a rough guide to upgrading the driveline and suspension of a Mark III. The Mark IV is mainly just the need of a restoration after being bastardised by noobs. I have to reverse a lot of the damage done by improper modifications and general wear and tear from years and years of abuse, a state which many Supras reside in. The engine's got to come out, everything has to be checked over or replaced, the entire car has to be rewired and the get rag is broken. It has a lot of dodgy body repairs and has been worked on by mechanics and you can never trust one of them to turn the spanner properly. As much as I would like to see over 600 horsepower, I want to see it in the state a Supra should be in. I'm not a professional and the majority of the work done to these cars will be do-it-yourself including the engine rebuilds, fabrication etc. See you next time.